Ooh, that's a nice one. No. Love that color. No. Can I have that? No. Can we keep it? Nope. For my house. What house? When I'm older. You're 16. So? Hi, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. If you are a flipper and you happen to share your domicile with other human persons, you too may have grown accustomed to this familiar chorus. It's a bit of the little red hen syndrome. Nobody wants to help you pull that big heavy buffet out of the back of the car, but when the cookies come out of the oven, suddenly everyone is there, ready to help you eat them. Perhaps it's because I had closed off my icy capitalistic flipping heart to the cries of, can't we just keep that one? That I didn't realize until too late that the one person I would keep a flip for really wanted this one because it was kind of hot. I often think the term trash to treasure is a bit overused. I mean, treasure, really, but when I saw this Thomasville 70s bar out on the sidewalk, I immediately thought, that's a true diamond in the rough. It's clear to see why she was abandoned. It appears something quite hot had been set down on the top. Those white marks are a telltale sign. But otherwise, this little gem was in great shape, and I had high hopes I could save that gorgeous burl wood top. I also found myself standing back and thinking, what color do you want to be, my dear? I knew I wanted to paint the body, but I was all over the map as far as colors. I held up the usual suspects, but nothing felt quite right. So I put a pin in the color choice and moved on to what I knew would be the other main design statement of this piece, its burlwood elements. I was so excited to uncover that burlwood top that I broke one of my own rules, which is to always clean before sanding. That is best practices. But in my defense, as I am sanding these bar doors, I hope you can see why I was in such a hurry. What I am finding is incredible. Burlwood in its natural lighter finish looks a lot like a topographical map. Now, I do not know what the philosophical spiritual implications are when you realize that a cross section from the inside of a tree looks remarkably like the Earth's surface as seen from space, but there's definitely something kind of amazing about it. Okay, calming down and back to the bar. I sat back and I looked and looked and looked at her and I decided at least some of this brass needed to go. All that brass hardware reminded me of a pirate chest and it was just dating the piece and was also distracting from what I felt was the true star of the show, the Burlwood Doors, so I decided to try removing some of it. I started with those corner brackets. I found that if I loosened them with that paint scraper just a bit, I could grab those tiny brass nails with a set of pliers. Pulling straight back towards myself, I was able to remove all of them without really any bending. When I had removed the corner and door decorative brackets, I set the doors and drawers back into place and sat back and looked at it some more. And yeah, decided to just go for it and take all the brass handles and pulls off as well. She's just literally dotted with jewelry and I think the piece really needs to go more sleek and modern. The hardware is nice, it's well made and solid and so I used painter's tape to keep all the pieces together and I carefully labeled everything so that it would be ready to go if I wanted to use it on a future piece and also just in case I changed my mind. Okay, now it was definitely time to clean, so I made my big bucket of warm water and some of Dixie Bell's cleaner called White Lightning. The link to that is below if you would like to check it out in the description. White Lightning is a great furniture cleaner product. It's a TSP base though, so make sure to wear gloves to protect your skin and make sure to thoroughly rinse your piece. Leaving TSP residue behind can wreak havoc with your paint finish. 
And yes, I am wearing two pairs of eyeglasses on my head. <laughs> it's my signature, what can I say? Whether you're flipping for sale or making over your own furniture for yourself, now is the time to clean the bottom of your piece, as this is a favorite hangout spot for spiders and cobwebs and dust bunnies. And here's why we clean pieces before painting them. <laughs> Phew, okay, after all that excitement, she had a little rest in front of the office fireplace to get nice and dry. All right, then I brought the bar out onto the steps and gave it a light scuff sanding. This is a step that a lot of painters skip and it isn't always necessary, but boy, it really does help. Paint likes a surface with a bit of teeth to grab onto and make a seal with. So if your piece feels pretty smooth or slippery, this is a great step to include. Here's another great step to think about including in a furniture makeover. Whenever you are going from a wood finish to a painted finish, stand back and look at your piece and think about how any existing cracks or grooves will appear to your eye when the finish changes. And that includes the ones that are there as an intentional part of the original design. The natural variations in wood make things like cracks and grooves less obvious to the eye while the smooth monotone paint finish will really highlight anything like that. So now is a great time to fill in anything you think may look less than attractive once painted. I technically shouldn't be using my caulking gun for this, but you know, sometimes I like to be a rebel and just walk on the wild side. I filled some of the larger grooves on the bottom of that super cool curved base and then filled those tiny holes from the brass nails. Okay, it's not a party until the Bondo comes out, right? I'm using Bondo to fill the old hardware holes on the two long drawers. Bondo is super hard and tough and it's great for larger or deeper repairs. It can also add a lot of fun drama to any flip you undertake as it has a fairly quick open time or time you have until it hardens up. I mean, we are talking two to three minutes. So make sure you are prepped and ready to go when you mix in the magic red hardener because the Bondo clock is a ticking. After all the drama and excitement of the Bondo application, you can relax as you sand it down. Here I'm using my orbital sander and a 180 then 220 grit disc to bring all that dried filler flush to the drawer fronts. Okay, finally time for a final wipe down with a tack cloth and a little painter's tape to protect the wood top. And then out came the primer. Wah! I'm using Boss in white by Dixie Belle. <laughs> Why am I using primer? Well, because with all the wood grid details on the front of this piece, you may be able to see some of that here it was pretty difficult to scuff sand all of that surface. Plus, with all the extra sanding on the drawers, I've actually exposed some of the natural wood there. And so it's very possible any paint could wake up the wood tannins and cause bleed through, or those brownish yellow stains you may have seen occasionally come through on painted furniture. For priming and painting the drawers and doors, I'm using Zebra's square paintbrush, as well as a small artist brush. This square brush is so fantastic at getting in tight square spaces, like the ones on these angular doors. Mm -hmm. 
then for that little bit of wood surrounding that gorgeous brass placard, I used a small artist brush. So I've obviously taped off the raised burl wood piece on the door, but I didn't try to tape off the brass piece. I found that working with this small brush, I was able to have good control and could snug that primer neatly up against the brass. I don't use small brushes like this often, but they do come in handy every once in a while and are great to have around when you are working with furniture. Okay, primed and ready to go. Now I've got to decide on a color. What craziness is this? <laughs> well, this is Coral by Fusion Mineral Paint. After all my fussing and fuming and backing and forthing about paint color, I just decided to go nuts and break out this clear, bright, headstrong coral color. I put it on one side and then I wrapped up my brushes and I went and thought about things and had a snack and then I came back and painted the rest of the bar. And then I looked at it and I looked and I looked and I looked and looked and looked at it and I got out another color. <laughs> Okay, may I introduce you to Enchanted Echinacea. This too is by Fusion as part of their designer collection by Lisa Holmes. Here's the truth. I loved the coral, but it just wasn't what I wanted for this piece. So I'm changing directions. Now, these two colors together look a bit like a toxic sunset. So I apologize if this is giving you a headache. But using my squinty eye technique, I was able to see right away, this was what I had been looking for. This first coat looked pretty rough because of course the coral color is peeking through and these two colors have completely different base elements and therefore personalities. But I was convinced that once I got that second coat on, all would be well. Changing your mind and your direction mid-project can be a bit of a bummer. Paint is relatively inexpensive, but it's more about your time and your energy. And hitting a bump in the road like this can be discouraging. But I've found that it really helps me if I set realistic expectations for myself. I knew there was a chance I wouldn't want to stick with that coral color. And still, I'm glad that I put a coat of it on the piece. I needed to see it to really know if that was the direction I wanted to go in. So for me, it was worth it. Thankfully, I did have the good sense to not paint around those door brass placards until I had firmly decided on Enchanted Echinacea. So at some point I set the doors in place and looked at the piece and realized that I was going to need to bring that paint line further in so we wouldn't see that dark wood interior when the doors were closed. So I taped off an interior line, 
gave it a quick scuff sand and then just primed and painted it. It was about this time that I looked over at my wallpaper stash and I realized I had this wallpaper by Blooming Wall. The Amazon link is below with little hits of the exact shade of Enchanted Echinacea. And so I decided to add some of it to the sides of the drawers for a fun, fresh accent. I used the quick and non-measuring technique of tracing the actual drawer side with my paper cutter and then just cleaned up that trace with my scissors. I painted on some Zinzer Sure Grip adhesive and then smoothed down the piece of wallpaper, wiped up any excess glue, and then used my wallpaper smoother to get out any air bubbles, just as if I were applying it to a wall, working from the middle and pushing out and... There we go. Ah, finally time to install the door. Hmm. We seem to have been taken to black and white in what can only be seen as an obvious attempt to ramp up the dramatic reveal moment. Hmm. Well, anyway, hardware, so many choices. I decided to go with sleek seven inch brass pulls by Liberty that I picked up at Home Depot. The link is included. Their shade of brass was a little off from that original brass hardware on those center doors. So I gave them a quick spray with some metallic gold paint by Rust-Oleum and they looked perfect. Then I got out my Dixie Belle top coat in flat and gave it a good stir. When you are stirring top coat, you want to do it gently so as not to make any bubbles that could end up in your finish. Especially don't shake it. So stirred, not shaken with top coat. <laughs> and then I laid down three coats to seal both the top of the bar and the wood plaques on the doors. You know, I used to get so nervous when I put down top coat, but it really is not something we need to be freaked out about. These modern products are really made to be user-friendly for any experience level. The main things to keep in mind are to not keep going back over what you have already laid down because that can cause streak marks. Don't worry about those little level differences that you might see. The product is made to be self-leveling. A temporary darkening of the wood is normal. And in between coats, if you are feeling anything raised or rough on your surface, you can do a gentle sanding with a fine grit paper to give you a really smooth result. For the painted body, I used Dixie Belle's Easy Peasy Wax Spray, rubbing it in and wiping up any excess with a lint-free rag. As you can see, quality control arrived just in the nick of time to make sure I was getting in all of those grids and grooves. Okay, do you remember our brown, brassy, and slightly burnt diamond in the rough? And here she is now. This color, my friends, I don't think I have the photography skills to show its true beauty. It's pink, yes, but it is sophisticated, mellow, and it's earthy. It has the most amazing undertones. There's something so organic about it. And on this little gem of a bar, well, I'm afraid there's no other word for it. It was sexy. The burl wood patterning in its refreshed natural hue no longer has to compete with the dated pirate treasure chest hardware, and the original wood grid design looks sleek and elegant, played up by those new linear brass pulls. This little sidewalk find blew me away in her new sophisticated pink dress, and I wasn't the only one. I have to 
to be honest, I had no idea how to list this piece or if anyone would love the color as much as I did. My costs were right at about $30 and I listed and sold the piece for $195, giving me a profit of $165. It was a whirlwind. The piece sold in record time and before I knew it, away she went to her new home. Before I realized that my whiskey bourbon enthusiast husband actually really had his eye on this one. <laughs> Genuinely surprised, I asked him about the pink color and he said, It didn't look pink, it just looked amazing. So there you go. I think the moral of the story is that great color is great color. And I think I know who will be getting the next bar that I make. He always helps me lug the heavy furniture out of the car. <laughs> if you'd like to hear more stories about the romance and intrigue of the furniture flipping world, please hit that subscribe button before you go. Like, share, comment. I'd love to know what you think about pink. Thank you for joining me, my friends. I'll see you next time for more Furniture Fables.